some graduating classes are a little more enlightening than others. Do you really think it's gonna change anything around here? Make one single person smarter, or happier, or nicer? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 memorable school speeches in movies. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, thank you. For this list, we're choosing those movie moments that graced us with the most inspiring, the most ridiculous, or the most entertaining speeches from some of our favorite or not so favorite films. Well, that's what I'm talking about, guys. We've made a great effort so far. Let's just keep it up. That's right. We can't have anyone freak out out there, okay? We've got to keep our composure. Public speaking can be stressful, and listening to speeches can be a bore. But throw a little Hollywood into the mix, and you're bound to hear some gems. But guess what? Oh, no. The man ruined that, too, with a little thing called MTV. Number 10, The Man, School of Rock. My parents don't spend $15,000 a year for recess. What, you want to learn something? Yes, I do. What happens when a musician with no band and no prospects takes up substitute teaching in disguise as his roommate? All right, here's a useful lesson for you. Give up. Just quit. Because in this life, you can't win. Yeah, you can try. But in the end, you're just gonna lose big time because the world is run by the man. After his deceit proves effective, this wild child rocker is left to shape the minds of the future. And the man ruined the ozone, and he's burning down the Amazon, and he kidnapped Shamu and put her in a chlorine tank, okay? And there used to be a way to stick it to the man. It was called rock and roll. So it'd make sense that he'd launch into a lengthy diatribe about the man and subversion. After all, what's rock and roll without a little rebellion? And bitterness. So don't waste your time trying to make anything cool or pure or awesome, because a man's just gonna call you a fat, washed up loser and crush your soul. So do yourselves a favor and just give up! Oh. Number nine, debate Smackdown, old school. Sorry, we're going, we're going streaking through the quad and into the gymnasium. Come on, everybody! Come on, Snoop! Snoop a loop! Snoop a stay! No, it's cool, it's cool! When a bunch of middle-aged man children decide to start a fraternity at a college they don't attend, they find themselves having to overcome a gauntlet of obstacles to keep their frat house. One of these obstacles is a debate. What is your position on the role of government in supporting innovation in the field of biotechnology? When James Carville saunters onto the stage, it's all but assumed that the competition is a wrap. Well, Dean, I'm, I'm glad that you asked that Actually, question. Actually, I'd like to jump in and take that one, Jimmy, if you don't mind. At least, that was the goal. But the political commentator and his team grossly underestimated Frank the Tank and his blackout abilities. As a world leader, it's important for America to provide systematic research grants for our scientists. I believe strongly that there will always be a need for us to have a well-articulated innovation policy with emphasis on human resource development. Thank you. <laughs> the final candidate for student council president is another one of the Metzler clan, sophomore Tammy Metzler. Tammy. Number eight, who cares, election. Since I grew up without a dad, you might assume psychologically I was looking for a father figure, but that had nothing to do with it at all. It was just that Dave was so strong, and he made me feel so safe and protected. There were just so many scandals at this school, it's a wonder anyone even cared about a little student body election. Matchmaker, matchmaker, I'll bring the bell. You bring the groom. And, oh, and here I am on KCHS, our student-run TV station. The glittering must stop. Tracy Flick reporting. The irritatingly overachieving Tracy Flick is running for school president but she's up against the machinations of a teacher who secretly hates her, a popular jock, and his disgruntled sibling. Who cares about this stupid election? And it's that disgruntled sibling who manages to deliver an anti-speech for the history books, much to almost everyone's delight. So vote for me, because I don't even want to go to college, and I don't care, and as president, I won't do anything. The only promise I will make is that if elected, I will immediately dismantle the student government so that none of us will ever have to sit through one of these stupid assemblies again. Number seven, there's more to music than notes on a page, Mr. Holland's opus. I'm the only one in my family who's, 
I, I, I just can't. After having a close encounter with aliens and battling a bloodthirsty shark, Richard Dreyfuss took on the role of a beloved music teacher who never quite lived out his dream. That's right, because playing music is supposed to be fun. Once the composer-musician turned to teaching the art instead of only writing it, Glenn Holland manages to connect with his students on an inspirational level. It's about heart. It's about feelings and moving people and something beautiful and being alive. And it's not about notes on a page. I could teach you notes on a page. I can't teach you that other stuff. Brusque but encouraging, he delivers a speech to one of his students that reinforces her self-confidence and keeps her motivated. And this time, no music. Oh, what? Because you already know it. It's already in your head and your fingers and your heart. You just don't trust yourself to know that. Number six, Carpe Diem, Dead Poet Society. They were going to be talking about William Shakespeare. Oh, God. I know. A lot of you look forward to this about as much as you look forward to root canal work. We're going to talk about Shakespeare as someone who writes something very interesting. Robin Williams has an innate teddy bearness that makes him fun and endearing when he's being silly, but also fuzzy and reassuring when he takes on the serious stuff. Why do I stand up here? Anybody? To feel taller. No. Thank you for playing, Mr. Dalton. I stand upon my desk to remind myself that we must constantly look at things in a different way. In Dead Poet Society, he plays an elite prep school teacher who employs some rather unconventional methods to stir up his students. Just when you think you know something, you have to look at it in another way. Even though it may seem silly or wrong, you must try. That includes this rousing speech, which sows the seeds of yuppie insurgence and self-realization, and finds a spot on our list. Boys, you must strive to find your own voice. Because the longer you wait to begin, the less likely you are to find it at all. Thoreau said most men lead lives of quiet desperation. Don't be resigned to that. Number five, never give up, crazy stupid love. There is no such thing as one true Stop. love. As far as romantic comedies go, this one is a little bit of midlife crisis mixed with a coming of age story and a dash of Ryan Gosling doing what he does best being dreamy. My son's graduation speech sucks. Steve Carell plays a man devastated by his wife's infidelity. And it's easy to just look at a 13-year-old and say, you don't know what you're talking about. You are wrong. But I'm not so sure. But when his young son gives a school speech in the midst of his own heartbreak, he steps in to course correct. But I can promise you this. I will never stop trying because when you find the one, you never give up. I'm not a teacher. I'm the new basketball coach. Number four, our deepest fear, Coach Carter. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. Audiences may have grown accustomed to seeing Samuel L. Jackson giving audibly aggressive speeches prior to fighting off snakes or being eaten by genetically engineered sharks but this time he was on the receiving end of one. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We were all meant to shine as children do. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. In this sports drama, Jackson plays a coach committed to ensuring his basketball team receives a sound education. There will be no basketball, man. <laughs> That includes practices and games until we as a team reach the agreed upon GPA. After losing a school board ruling against one of his coaching decisions, his team rallies around him in a collective show of support. Our presence automatically liberates others. Sir, I just want to say thank you. You saved my life. Number three, a stimulating speech, Police Academy. For those here, I think you'll find the presentation interesting as well as very, very stimulating. Those wacky cops in training down at the Police Academy really knew how to shake things up back in the day. Now this first slide shows a very, very interesting thing. If mouth sound effects weren't out of the question, 
then certainly a little oral encouragement seemed par for the course in the department. Let us look at this slide for a moment without comment. I think it speaks for itself. The crafty bunch pull a not so unwelcome prank on their commandant with the help of a working girl. His resulting speech is, understandably, a little difficult for him to deliver, but hilarious to watch. Could we have the lights, please? Number two, Yahoo for School, Billy Madison. Of course I peed my pants. Everybody my age pees their pants. It's the coolest. Adam Sandler essentially plays himself in this mid-90s addition to the lowbrow comedy circuit. He takes on the role of an obnoxious slacker who's tasked with passing first grade all the way up through high school in just 24 weeks so that he can take over his father's successful business. Well, what can I say? I graduated. It's over. I did it. I know most of you are saying, hey, any idiot could do that. Well, it was tough for me, so back off! Of course, the movie features some hijinks and laughs, as well as Steve Buscemi being creepy. Days, black nights. But it's the way Billy Madison accomplishes his goal and commemorates the occasion Adam Sandler style that lands this flick speech here. Yeah, hoop Billy! Billy's number one! Yeah! <laughs> That's nice, buddy! Yahoo! Yahoo for school! Yahoo for me! Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. And we'll never forget the ideals that were instilled in us at our place, because we are shitheads now, and we'll be shitheads forever, and nothing you can say or do or stamp can take that away from us, so go! You must always have faith in people. And most importantly, you must always have faith in yourself. But I say to you, hey, Look at me. Please, don't worry so much. Your grades may be, your school may have been, but you can turn that around and make liars out of those bastards in exactly one hour and you take that test and pass it and win. But you see, change, like life, has a way of sneaking up on us. when we least expect it. Number one, it's rough out there, back to school. This is the first time in the history of this fine institution that a freshman has given this address. In what is probably the most realistic speech mankind will ever hear, Rodney Dangerfield regales his graduating class with the wisdom gained over decades of adult life. In Back to School, he plays a successful businessman who attends college to keep his despondent son motivated. I have only one thing to say to you today. It's a jungle out there. You gotta look out for number one, but don't step at number two. He not only manages to bribe his way through college, but he also courts the affections of a literary professor. And so, to all you graduates, as you go out into the world, my advice to you is, don't go. It's rough out there. Move back with your parents. Let them worry about it. And of course, he hits us with some hard truths the Dangerfield way. Do you agree with our list? No! What do you think is the most memorable school speech in movies? At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Peace, I'm out of here!